Hayek, like Salma Hayek. I'm low profile, my style is quiet. Yo, as long as all the po po foul, we wild and riot. Okay, before we start, we would like to announce the launch of our Patreon. The link is in the description. The majority of the documentaries we make are a censored version. We will be releasing the uncut versions on the Patreon, as well as exclusive content that will probably not reach YouTube for some time. This story is censored, but if you wish to see the unedited version, sign up to the Patreon. Rapid Rocket, Jacob Reese, Lillian War, Vanguard Troops, let's get them. Listen, nothing is free. We traded the hard in this game where Bernard got his crib raided and robbed in the same year. He scarred cause they hated. Now him and Saab on the same tier. Slave probably playing cards in the yard with a plain pair. I claim here, yeah, shit deeper than when your chain glare. Dame stared, yeah, I need reefer to keep my brain clear. The board hit my brother with two. Duda was sword, I'm never bored in the gutter with who. Cause Duda's a lord when he recording. I'm slaughtering them, I'ma see the board in me. And my daughter and them know that the Oh, to me as the lawman, I'm ignoring them foreign plates when Jake's trying to cop at times. I hate grind rock from on the state, kind of hot the crime rate. Be elevating with snakes through hella hating and for selling flakes. When we upstate, they celebrating up late. I'm meditating, still waiting on my son, Nate. We making all that crumb cake paper, me and my young take. Okay, we back in LES. Lower East Side, East Village, Alphabet City. It's all one thing to uptowners. The reason is, even though it's a part of Manhattan, it's so far from Harlem and Washington Heights. They have different politics and crews who have dealings in Brooklyn. We haven't touched a bit of the stories from here and the lower, and there is not much news coverage on the gangs here. This might be because of its location, a few blocks from the wealthy. With that, it can be hard to accurately categorize crews, due to lack of intel. There were crews like Block Boys, Cash is King, Stack Gang. Within those gangs, you had Crips and Latin Kings respectively. There were also Bloods. A lot of people are requesting the true life story, and we will attempt that in the future. If you look at the geography, you can imagine how many stories these neighborhoods hold, and we intend to get back down here and tell them, block by block. So, let's start here with the most recent. In May of 2022, former college basketball player 22-year-old Jesse Perilla was found murdered with his friend Nicky Huang in a burned-out car in the Bronx. So how did we end up here? A small hill on a Lower East Side street is the dividing line between two rival gangs whose disses have graduated from drill rap video threats to real-life violence, including the stray bullet slaying of an innocent man. But the fierce rivalry between the up the hill and down the hill gangs existed largely under the radar until Nikki Huang, robbed of her purse, sought out help from friends in one of the gangs setting in motion eight hours of terrifying tit-for-tat violence. The mayhem would leave dead bodies and three others shot and wounded across three boroughs. Not sure if everyone has been arrested for the terrifying wave of bloodshed. The shocking spasm of brutality was a dramatic escalation in a years-long feud between rival crews with territory stretching from Pike Street to East 6th Street. The dividing line between the two crews is a hill, a rise in the road on Grand Street near Madison Street. The explosion of gang violence started with a simple mugging. The armed robbery of Wong's pricey Louis Vuitton purse on a neighborhood street. Around 9 p.m. May 15, Wong texted her father, saying she'd just been pistol whipped in the holdup on Jackson Street near the restaurant her family runs. She advised him to change the locks to the family's apartment, the last he would ever hear from her. Instead of going to police, Wong reached out to a pal in the local Up the Hill gang. She hoped her connections in the tight-knit community would help get her things back, including $500 from a paycheck she'd just cashed, her ID, and her house keys. It was unclear to cops if she asked for retribution, or the local gang took it upon themselves to exact revenge. Retributions was swift though. Brandon Atkinson was shot to death as payback on Avenue D and East 3rd Street about 11.15 p.m. May 15, cops said. The NYPD gave Atkinson's age as 39 after he died, but he was actually 20. This happened right near Wald Houses though Atkinson was not the mugger. His death instantly amped up the clash between the crews, because his half-brother is a revered older original gang member of what is now known as the Down the Hill crew. They hit him, and he dies, said a source. Then it goes to DEFCON 4. 
an hour after Atkinson's slaying, in what police sources describe as retaliation for his death, a gunman shot a 22-year-old man in the wrist and an innocent 19-year-old bystander in the leg in a park behind the Rutgers houses near Madison Street. Three males pulled up in a silver sedan, jumped out of the car and sprayed bullets, striking the pair. Perilla's mom told the news last week that nothing seemed amiss the night her only child took the car they shared to do his laundry, play some basketball and hang out with his friends. He was driving a 2020 Honda Accord. Jesse Perilla gave Nicky Huang the ride to Grand Street around 1 a.m. in the Monday. While his car was parked in front of her apartment building, Huang apparently was banging on the door because she'd forgotten to bring her keys. At some point, Perilla was carjacked in his Honda. The vehicle swooped back and picked up Nikki Huang. Perilla's mom, meantime, was repeatedly trying to reach her son. Perilla and Huang were reportedly taken in the Honda to Maspeth, Queens, where a reputed gang member was shot in the face as he took out the garbage at 2.20 a.m. This was about the time Perilla's mom finally reached her son, who told his mother he was in Brooklyn. He really held it together, his mother sobbed, whatever they told him, he made no sound of it. Perilla's mom kept asking her son if he was coming home, and she quoted his final words to her. I love you, mom. And I went to say, I love you, too, but the phone hung up. I still didn't think of anything. I called back, and it went straight to voicemail. Huang and 22-year-old longtime pal Jesse Perilla, meanwhile, were driven away and gruesomely executed, both shot in the head. The Honda was found on Shore Road near Pelham Split Rock Golf Course in the Bronx's Pelham Bay Park. Their bodies were found charred beyond recognition inside. Perilla, a promising former college basketball player, was collateral damage, killed only because he was hanging out with Wong, his friend since middle school, investigators believed. Perilla worked for Uber Eats and was going to start a new job in the mailroom of Bellevue Hospital. He had attended Genesee Community College, where he played point guard for the school's basketball team and dreamed of shooting hoops for the NBA. His mother fell asleep and woke up at 5 a.m., worried about her son. At 10.30 a.m., police called from the 45th precinct in the Bronx and asked if the 2020 Honda was her vehicle. When she went to the Bronx, she saw what was left of the car. I couldn't imagine what he went through, the mother cried, recalling seeing the burned-out shell of her son's Honda. I just couldn't imagine the pain that kid went through. Jesse Perilla was seated in the driver's seat of the car when he was found, burned beyond recognition with a gunshot to the head, while Nicky Huang was in the passenger seat, having suffered the same fate. He was taking a friend home, and it cost him his life, the mother said. Memorials for the three victims rose quickly, just blocks away from each other on the Lower East Side. Outside Walung Kitchen, where Huang had been a familiar face behind the counter, a tribute with photos of the slain woman, had drawn the attention of passers-by. Only half a mile away, just north of the Williamsburg Bridge, a memorial full of candles, photos and scrawled messages at the corner of Avenue D and East 3rd Street depicts Atkinson as a loving dad to an infant boy, also named Brandon. Perilla was memorialized just three blocks away at Avenue D and East 6th Street, with signed basketballs, sneakers and an awardee one for his hoop skills nestled among candles and flowers. These children are killing each other over nonsense, over areas of blocks. I can barely sleep, knowing that my son was in pain. For years, Huang had worked behind the counter at Walung Kitchen, her family's Chinese restaurant on Grand Street, that sits right on the dividing line between the two territories. The decades-old eatery is frequented by residents from both sections of the hill. In addition to the restaurant, where she worked to help her family, Huang's parents purchased her a nail salon, Nails by Nikki, to run just a block away. I just want them to get the killer, Huang's father told the news. Whoever did this, they might know us too. They may come here and get food. This just in, police were still looking for Bronx-based Trinitarios gang members Jamal Sanders, 30, and Steven Santiago, 34, who are wanted for questioning in Huang's and Perilla's gruesome deaths. Santiago is Atkinson's stepbrother, police said. As of March of 2023, there was a development in the case. Cops nabbed one of the suspects, Jamal Sanders, 31, at a Bronx homeless shelter after almost a year-long manhunt, police sources said. He's been charged with murder, manslaughter, robbery, grand larceny, kidnapping and arson for his role in the killings. Also, Zimmer Humphrey, 18, was arrested by U.S. Marshals in West Virginia not too long after Atkinson's death. He was extradited to New York on August 9, 2022, to face charges in Atkinson's assassination, police said.
The bloodshed in the years leading up to the mugging includes the stray bullet slaying of James Weeks, a 25-year-old father of four, on July 13, 2019. He was an innocent bystander shot by a gang member aiming for a rival, police now say. Weeks, who worked for Citibank, was hanging out with friends when he was shot in the face behind the Lillian Wald houses about 2.45 a.m., the same location where Atkinson would be slain nearly three years later in payback for the purse snatching. It was retaliation for another shooting that had happened, a source said, he wasn't related to anything. He was just coming over to hang out with some friends. There was a bunch of people in the park because it was a nice Friday night. Accused shooter Malik Facey, 22 at the time, was awaiting trial for murder for weeks slaying. What we do know is that Atkinson was close to Tokyo. Tokyo was killed in 2013 over a biggie marmot coat. We did a story about that. Tokyo harbored the Lillian Wald and Burge houses, but was from Burge. Crazy thing is, another situation took place involving a man with the surname, Facey, more recently. They are probably not related, but I'm throwing this story in here. January, 2020. Police shot and killed Earl Facey, a reputed gangbanger parolee who had just fatally gunned down another suspected gang member in the East Village. The parolee, 37-year-old Earl Facey, and Richard Reed, 41, were both inside the Haiti Lounge hookah bar on Avenue A near East 7th Street, each accompanied by a woman when Reed and Facey got into a fight after the women they were with bumped into each other, police and sources said. During the fracas, a bottle or glass of water was thrown, prompting a bouncer to boot all those involved out onto the street, where Facey and Reed ultimately opened fire on each other. This footage is super graphic, so we can only show it on Patreon. Anyway, two uniformed officers from the 9th Precinct were on patrol inside nearby Tompkins Square Park when they heard gunshots at around 3.30 a.m. and quickly raced over to the scene. The officers immediately exited the park and tactically approached the location where they observed a man shooting at another male. Facey, believed to be a member of the insane gangsta Crips, blasted Reed also purportedly of the Crips gang in the torso, sources said, adding that the two men did not know each other. The cops, who were both wearing body cams, shouted several commands for Facey to drop the weapon and get on the ground, but the ex-con refused and kept on walking, Monahan said, adding that this is based off of a body-worn camera. That's when the officers fired off three rounds, striking and killing Facey, who had served about seven years in prison for a prior shooting and was on parole for that. Facey and Reed, who was not struck by police during the wild encounter, were taken to Bellevue Hospital Center, where they both were pronounced dead. Cops said a 22 caliber handgun was found underneath Facey, and another 22 caliber handgun was recovered near Reed. The pair of officers were uninjured and taken to Lenox Hill Hospital for evaluation. Reed, who lived in Brownsville, was a crip with 14 arrests on his record, said sources. He had connections to two previous shootings, sources said. He was a person of interest in the March 31, 2019, non-fatal shooting in Bedford-Stuyvesant, and was a witness in another shooting, also not fatal, on January 3, 2017, on the Lower East Side. Facey, a member of the insane gangsta Crips who reportedly lived in East Harlem, had an even worse record, sources said. He had been arrested 21 times and served almost seven years in state prison for gun possession, before he was paroled in August 2017. He was also considered a suspect in a September 28, 2008 shooting in East Flatbush and April 3, 2008 murder in Flatbush, sources said. Facey was also shot once before in Crown Heights on May 1, 2004. So, we must talk about something much more related to the actual war taking place in LES. As we stated, the rival crew's territories stretch from Pike Street to East 6th Street, the dividing line between the two crews is the hill. Police crippled gang violence on the Lower East Side after arresting a 17-year-old crew leader and drill rapper on attempted murder charges, the local precinct commander told the community. His apprehension has helped us tremendously in taming the violence that continues to affect us, 7th Precinct Captain Luis Barsha said at a meeting last week. A lot of the gang members looked up to him because he's a rapper he's known, he's popular, he's got a lot of followers. Without the leader, they don't have any guidance. You could say they become kids. 
Sources identified the top dog as Jolik Edmonds, who performs under the name YBC Big Belly, and is believed to be a lead combatant in the generation's long battle between the city's notorious up the hill and down the hill crews. My brother, he died in In the grand scope of things, the two gangs are rumored to be behind the recent gruesome slayings of Perilla and Wong, the couple shot to death in the burning car in the Bronx. No crimes including robbery, felony assault, grand larceny and petty larceny have all continued to climb in the 7th precinct since the alleged up the hill chief was put in cuffs. Police said gang activity has quieted recently though. Those arrested have been persons of interest in other shooting incidents, and by them being in custody, the precinct can refocus their efforts on other crimes, an NYPD spokesperson said. At the end of March, Edmonds allegedly shot a 28-year-old man in the back at the intersection of Madison and Montgomery streets. This is area is dead in the middle of the Governor Gardens and LaGuardia houses. With lead lodged in him, the victim drove himself on the FDR drive to Bellevue Hospital. The back windshield of his 2009 Toyota Camry was completely shattered from gunfire, photos taken by the Post show. Edmonds was later arrested on April 20 for attempted murder. Another gang member, Jamori, was arrested on April 12 for robbery in relation to the March shooting. As a drill rapper with hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube, Edmonds sings about gunning down his enemies while he fans out wads of $100 bills, cruises the streets in a bright yellow Audi, and acts out an armed stick-up at a convenience store just for some candy and sodas. One music video takes an even more disturbing turn when it shows actual footage of Edmonds kneeing a kid in the head and punching another in the face as onlookers cheer and film the brutal beatdowns. In a 2019 interview with the YouTube channel Kids of Hip Hop, Edmonds said he gets into fistfights daily. It would always be me getting jumped and it'd be me and my guys fighting all the time, he said. I don't like using weapons. When I do stuff, I think about their parents and all that. I've got mad love for my ops. He is close with YBCJ, and they are trying to make a name for themselves down there in the lower. So, yeah, YBC Big Belly will be dealing with that case, and we will be updating you on this. Since we in the lower, we might as well mention this too. In October of 2021, a 16-year-old gangbanger was slain on the Lower East Side. It was a Friday night, and the boy with a lengthy rap sheet was more than likely targeted for death. He was the 22nd teen killed by street violence in the Big Apple that year. Isaiah Levine, aka Zay, was a reputed member of the Pitt Street crew and had notched 11 felony arrests between 2018 to 2021, ranging from gun possession and robbery with a knife to a slashing arrest and criminal mischief for allegedly jumping and stomping on a teacher's car in November 2018. On a Friday night, Levine was hanging out with a group on the corner of Delancey and Suffolk Streets when a gunman approached and started blasting at around 8.30 p.m. The bullets or bullet fatally struck the teen in the face. Was rushed to Bellevue Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. A second victim, a 24-year-old man, was shot in the hip. He is expected to recover. As far as Levin, he wasn't a kid who stayed inside, said a man in his late 20s, who said he knew Levine. He wasn't going to school. He wasn't the kid when you hear this you go wow, I never expect this. You expect it. He was living the life, I feel sorry for what happened though. He was young, the man said near the shooting scene. The young man was known by people who lived in the nearby barrage houses. Levine was being eyed in a string of robberies against Asian Americans on the Lower East Side and was a suspect in an area homicide. He was out on the street after being arrested in February 2021 on a gun charge. That case, which occurred on Staten Island, is sealed. Levine's last open case is for a robbery that occurred January 22, 2020. I'm trying to get myself together, his distraught mother told the Post. I'm in shock, my feelings are shot. I'm angry and upset. I don't know who did this, but I hope to get some justice. As far as we know, there have been no arrests in connection to the fatal shooting. Police sources said four men were spotted fleeing the location, and five 40 caliber shell casings were recovered from the scene. This next situation is type crazy. Early in 2022, January, a man who disguised himself as a food delivery rider and was suspected of murder. A 30-year-old man was shot in the doorway of his apartment. 
Footage released by the NYPD shows the suspect, clad in a dark jacket with yellow reflectors and two bags, gain entry to the Lillianwald housing block, posing as a food delivery rider. The suspect emerged minutes later, appearing to be holding only one bag, before speeding off on an e-bike. NYPD officers responding to a 911 call, subsequently found Dave Invenable, 30, bleeding from multiple gunshot wounds to his back and neck in the doorway of his fourth floor apartment. Venable was pronounced dead at Mount Sinai Beth Israel Medical Center later that evening. Not only did the suspect use an elaborate disguise to enter the building incognito, law enforcement sources alleged Venables was shot after answering the door to someone who knocked and asked did you order an Uber. This is not to make fun or glorify, but that was a gangster move. That feels really personal, like execution. But that's about it for this one. As we know, a lot of these houses had their internal disputes. That's that, we will be back with a more in-depth gang war in the lower soon. We working. But as always, stay low and thanks for watching.